When you hear that a wheel liner is anodized, it immediately sounds like a premium engineering choice. The word itself carries weight. It suggests durability, precision, and advanced material science. But what does anodized actually mean, and does the surface we're looking at truly match that description? That question is more interesting than it first appears. If you zoom in and really study the wheel liner, the finish looks clean, consistent, and clearly treated. There's no question that the surface has been intentionally engineered for protection. But the moment you start comparing it to anodized aluminum you may have seen elsewhere, doubts naturally start to creep in. The texture, the sheen, the way light interacts with it, something feels a little different. Before deciding whether that difference matters, it's worth stepping back and understanding what anodization really is and why it's used so often in the first place. To start, let's talk about aluminum itself. Aluminum behaves far differently from steel when exposed to the environment. Steel corrodes in a destructive way. When iron reacts with oxygen, it forms iron oxide, rust. That rust flakes off, exposing fresh metal underneath, which then rusts again. Over time, the process feeds on itself until the metal can completely deteriorate. Aluminum does something far smarter. The instant aluminum is exposed to air, it reacts with oxygen and forms aluminum oxide on its surface. This oxide layer is incredibly stable and tightly bonded to the metal beneath it. In fact, aluminum oxide is one of the hardest naturally occurring compounds. It's the same base material found in corundum, which includes rubies and sapphires. So in a sense, aluminum naturally protects itself with an ultra-thin layer of something extremely tough. The issue isn't effectiveness, it's thickness. That naturally forming oxide layer is only a few nanometers thick. We're talking billionths of a meter. While it does offer protection, it's still very thin and can wear away under harsh conditions. That's where anodization enters the picture. Anodization is a controlled process designed to dramatically thicken that aluminum oxide layer. Instead of a few nanometers, anodized coatings are measured in micrometers, thousands of times thicker. Typical anodized layers range anywhere from 5 to 30 micrometers, depending on the application and process parameters. The process itself is electrochemical. The aluminum part is submerged in an acid bath, commonly sulfuric acid, and connected as the anode in an electrolytic cell. This might feel counterintuitive, since people often associate the positive terminal with the cathode, but in an electrolytic system, the aluminum becomes the anode. That's exactly where the term anodization comes from. When electrical current passes through the system, oxygen ions react with the aluminum surface in a controlled manner, building up a thick, uniform layer of aluminum oxide. By adjusting voltage, current, and time, manufacturers can precisely control how thick that layer becomes. As this oxide layer grows, something fascinating happens. The surface develops a microscopic hexagonal pore structure. These pores extend deep into the oxide layer, and they're what make anodization so versatile. Dyes can be absorbed into these pores, which is why anodized aluminum can come in such vivid, durable colors. After dyeing, the pores are sealed, often by immersing the part in boiling water, which locks the color in place and further strengthens the surface. The key takeaway here is that anodization doesn't add a coating on top of the metal, it transforms the surface of the metal itself. And that brings us back to the wheel liner. If you've ever handled anodized aluminum before, on climbing carabiners, tools, knives, or precision hardware, you may notice a common visual trait. Anodized aluminum often looks metallic. It reflects light in a way that feels integrated into the metal. Even when it's colored, it usually doesn't look like paint, it looks like colored metal. Powder coating behaves differently. Powder coating is a surface treatment where a dry powder is applied electrostatically and then cured with heat. The result is a durable, corrosion-resistant finish, but it sits on top of the metal rather than becoming part of it. Even when it's glossy, powder coating often has a slightly thicker, more coated appearance. 
When closely examining this wheel liner, the finish appears uniform and protective, but it doesn't immediately evoke that classic anodized look many people are familiar with. Instead, it looks more like there may be a distinct layer applied over the surface, something closer to powder coating, polymer coating, or possibly even a ceramic-based coating. That doesn't mean it's a bad choice. From a functional standpoint, all of these treatments can be highly effective at preventing corrosion and extending component life. Engineers often select surface treatments based on cost, manufacturability, durability, and long-term performance, not just appearance. So the question here isn't whether the part is protected, it clearly is. The question is whether the term anodized is being used in the strict technical sense or whether it's being applied more loosely. It's entirely possible that the aluminum wasn't polished prior to anodization. Most anodized parts people recognize have been polished beforehand, which gives them that bright, reflective finish. Without polishing, anodized aluminum can appear more matte and subdued, which could explain the difference in appearance. Still, when comparing known examples side by side, the surface here doesn't immediately resemble the anodized finishes many people are used to seeing. That's what makes this worth discussing. Is this truly anodized aluminum with a non-polished base? Is it powder-coated for cost efficiency and durability? Is it polymer-coated or ceramic-coated instead? Without official clarification, all that can be done is analyze known material behaviors and compare visual characteristics. What's undeniable is that the surface treatment, whatever method was used, was chosen to protect the metal from corrosion and environmental exposure. There are many valid ways to achieve that goal, and each comes with its own trade-offs. But for those interested in material science, engineering decisions, and manufacturing processes, the distinction matters. The difference between anodization and coating isn't just cosmetic, it speaks to how the part was made and how it will behave over time. So now it comes down to perspective. Does this finish look like anodized aluminum to you, or does it feel more like a coating applied on top of the metal? Have you seen anodized parts with a similar appearance, or does this stand out as something different? It's a small detail, but small details often reveal the most about engineering choices. And regardless of the method, the ultimate goal remains the same. Durability, protection, and long-term performance. I'm genuinely curious what you think.